All right, since we're doing another Windows video, I decided to wear my Apple shirt today. Yes, my Apple shirt. You can get one too on epicpants.com. So what we're gonna talk about, there was no punctuation right there. What we're gonna talk about is Windows 10 LTSC versus Windows 11 LTSC. Both of those are the newest versions for 11. It's LTSC 24H2. Both of them are the IoT versions. Very stripped down versions of Windows. If you're just joining us and you're like, what is LTSC? What is this thing? It's basically Windows Enterprise. That's what they called it in the past, but it's not really available directly to the public. So you have to go online and grab an ISO and you know use Rufus and make your own installation media. You don't just go grab a media creation tool or whatever. You don't upgrade from your regular copy of Windows over to LTSC either. You're going to have to do a clean, fresh install. Having said that, I did have Windows 10 LTSC installed on this computer that I'm using right now to do the capturing, and I was able to just put in my Windows 11 LTSC USB stick, and it recognized it, and it allowed me to upgrade and keep all of my files, not my drivers and my programs, but all of my files, my photos, my documents. So it was just a regular upgrade process from Windows 10 LTSC to Windows 11 LTSC 24H2 IoT. Anyway, the LTSC versions are stripped down. They don't come with any of the nonsense they come with all the core functionality you can play your games on them you can run your programs on them you can do your office work on them but they don't come with microsoft recall that's the thing that takes pictures of your screen all the time so that's really sad doesn't come with teams how are you gonna live i'm sorry i don't know how you can function without teams it also doesn't come with a number of other pre-installed things like candy crush or whatever it's a very stripped down version of the operating system so in this video i'm gonna benchmark a lot of games and then in about a month from now i'm gonna talk about my you know experience using this operating system. But first, I'm going to tell you how to unlock your copy of Windows 10 LTSC and Windows 11 LTSC IoT Edition. Yes. When it comes to buying a retail key, well, those are like ridiculous amounts of money. Look at this. That's the price you're going to pay for a retail key. Now let's go over to whokeys.com where I grab my OEM keys and let's take a look at this. This is the price of Windows. No, it's not. We've got a 25% off coupon code. Put in coupon code TS25 and watch that price come down. There we go. Now they also have LTSC and this is something that is you know more difficult to get. You can't go to Windows and buy a key for this. This is more for like enterprise grade stuff, but there are some keys out there and you can get them here. And this is the IoT edition. So that'll give you plenty of years of use. And then we also have the Windows 11 version and now the IoT version because I bothered them so much. I was like, get the IoT version on there so we can get that going. 25% off on all of these. We also got Home and Pro. So if you want just one of the regular versions of Windows, you can grab all of those here. Above and beyond that, we've got Microsoft Office. You've got 2019 and also Office 2016. These are offline versions. You're not going to be paying that monthly subscription fee anymore. You've got a one-time fee. Then it's that version of Office. You're good to go. You don't have to sign in and there's no co-pilot that's now on the new versions of office you might have seen like the little ai button up on the top well that's actually key logging you they're just watching everything that you're doing so if you use one of these and don't sign in just pay the one-time fee well you're gonna have the benefit of not having the ai thing reading all the stuff that they're using for training data but we know what's going on it's just they're hoovering up everything right people in the uk anyway this is where i go to grab my oem key. so what's the difference between an oem key and a retail key other than that ridiculous price that's pretty much it i mean you got to do your own tech support and sometimes they get locked to the hardware because they're oem keys so you'd have to buy this many 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 times after many 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 motherboard and cpu upgrades to justify the cost of just one of those retail keys so that's not even a thing in my brain a lot of these keys are also picked up from arbitrage and stuff from different places in the world but they still will unlock your version of windows so that's all i really care about i'm pragmatic i want a key that works and these have always worked for me and i've been using oem keys all the way since the windows xp days let's go ahead and check out with our copy of windows 11 pro all right, just put in my card info. There we go. Click on View Keys and Codes. Once you get to the User Center, click on Get the Key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that, copy that, press Start, and then type Activate. You'll see Activation Settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here, it says Not Active. Just click on Change Product Key. Place in our product key, and then click on Activate. Hey, look at that. Active. Head over to whokeys.com. Get your copy of Windows unlocked. Get your LTSC ready for October. All right, so onto our regularly scheduled program. You know, my initial feelings with Windows 11 uh, LTSC is it feels almost just like Windows 10, but it's like the contrarian version of Windows 10 that doesn't want to do all the stuff that I want it to do, so it fights back with me a little bit initially. But once I get everything set up the way I like it, it's not so bad because I use my own interface. I use RetroBar for my taskbar. I use OpenShell for my start menu. So I've got my own version of Windows. It doesn't feel quite as nice as some of the stuff on Linux. I mean, the KDE stuff, don't get me started on how much better plasma is.
Linux people I know, we should all switch to Linux. And if you're someone who's lucky enough to be able to use you know, Linux for all of your needs, then great. Because I think that there's one thing that matters the most when it comes to all this computing stuff for a lot of us, and that's the gaming you know, ability or the gaming performance. And Linux right now is able to do a lot of it. It's not like the, you know, the office stuff where we're okay using LibreOffice or OpenOffice because those are like, you know, we've got Office at home and it's whatever. It, it opens up the worksheet. It opens up the thing. It's fine. But we don't want to have like, hey, I want to go play games. Well, Linux is like, we have gaming at home. We don't want that version of gaming. We want real gaming. And Linux kind of has that now, except for the anti-cheat stuff that's in the works. But what I'm saying is if you can go over to Linux and it meets your needs, then by all means. But for some of us who need to stay on Windows, we're gonna have to figure out if we wanna go to 11 or stay on 10, LTSC that is. You know, I need it for a lot of my creative stuff and I've made videos about this, so I'm not gonna cover it, but I, you know, am and I will be installing Linux on many machines in my house. In fact, I have Linux on about the same amount of machines as I do Windows, so yeah, I just don't have any Mac stuff. That's the thing I don't have. <laughs> This is a Ryzen 9 7945HX. Yes, that is a mobile part, but it's so stupid fast. It's faster than most of your desktop parts. So yeah, it's part of the Minis Forum motherboard combo there, the 790i, BD790i. Then we have a GeForce RTX 4070 Super. I'm using MSI to cap that out at 2600 megahertz. That's just where it is. It's got a little bit of an undervolt going on and I'm adding 650 megahertz to the, um, to the RAM. It's it could probably take a thousand without a problem, but just doing that to maintain consistency between Windows uh, 10 and 11. So they're both getting that same setting. Then we have 64 gigabytes of uh, DDR5. So that's all the specs that really are gonna matter for these benchmarks. Now Valley is uh, interesting. It was a very, very similar between the two. Take a look at the average. One FPS difference with Windows 11 LTSC. So there are very similar under the hood. It's kind of like once you get rid of all the bloat, things are similar, but we're gonna keep going and we'll see how this trend keeps up, shall we? Hmm, superposition. Now superposition is interesting because it um, does both the CPU and the GPU at the same time with all the physics and stuff, physics, all the just physics, physics. God, I can't say physics without saying physics because my brain has been trained by a GIA. Anyway, take a look at this. Uh, Windows 10 is actually ahead by a little bit. Not much, because once you get up here, then it's less than a maybe one and a half percent or something. I ain't gonna calculate it. Y'all can calculate it all you want. Moving right on up to superposition 4K optimized. And again, Windows 10 is slightly ahead, but it's almost a wash. Very similar performance, but Windows 10 a little bit ahead. All right, let's take a look at Oblivion. Now, I've had a lot of fun playing Oblivion recently. Um, probably a bit too much fun modding and everything, but this is an unmodded version just a spot in the forest that I run through. If you want a copy of my save file, I guess I could send it over so you could test the exact same spot. I just run down this hill over and over to try to recreate the exact same benchmark. And we're trying Windows 10. And take a look at this at 1440p on the ultra setting with no DLSS, Windows 10 is ahead by quite a substantial margin. Like this is not like one or 2% anymore. It's like, you can feel this difference. So I was like, okay, maybe that's just for, maybe it's just no DLSS, maybe 1440p. Maybe that was just a fluke because you know, this is not a canned benchmark. I'm doing this one myself, but I'm trying to make sure there's no, no creatures around or nothing to mess it up. Same time of day, you know, I'm reloading the same save file and rerunning the test, but let's check it out on 1440p turning DLSS on. And you can see now the performance is almost the same. And our 1% lows are quite a bit better with Windows 11 LTSC. Now, maybe that is because of this. Head over to my settings app. In Windows 11, if we look for gaming, we go to our graphics settings and everything. We have several different options. We've got optimized, you know, gaming. So we've got advanced graphics, hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. You know, I've got some options in the BIOS turned on, but I had that turned on for, um, windows as well we have our gaming mode settings so we have a, what maybe just one more option i think it is here that you get for uh all this gaming stuff but i have all that stuff turned on so maybe they were starting to see that a little bit but let's keep on going take a look at our 1080p uh, and 1080p with no dlss look at that it's like the same operating system man it's wild all right let's go down and take a look at 1080p with dlss and again very similar but we're getting an edge with Windows 10 here. I wonder if that's going to be a trend. I didn't expect that. I expected Windows 11 to be significantly faster as in like three or four FPS, but when you looked at so many FPS, three or four becomes significant, does it not? 
All right, let's head over to Doom the Dark Ages. We're going to test that out. I'm going to do both these tests with DLSS because it kind of needs it with all the stuff that's going on. But here's 1440p uh, DLSS on the Ultra Nightmare setting. God, the id tech. Why didn't they not use id tech? Look at this. Oblivion remastered. Why did they not develop a version of id tech that can handle big open worlds? Why? They've got the resources. Anyway, enough of that. I should yell and screw about that into the void later. But look at this. The average there with... Um, Windows 10, not bad. Looking a little bit better. You can feel the difference. And let's take a look at 1080p and see what... Yeah, look at that. Why is Windows 10 so... That's significantly faster. I don't understand. I... Why? I... I I'm at a loss right now. All right, let's 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 try Cyberpunk. We're going to do 1440p on the Ultra RTX setting with no DLSS right now. And it's that's another identical. So it's like either Windows 10 is way ahead or it's almost identical. I don't. All right, let's let's turn DLSS on and see what happens. And again, it's very, very similar within the margin of error there with 1440p DLSS turned on on the quality setting between Windows 10 and 11. Let's drop it down to 1080p and see if the CPU matters. Again, almost the same with no DLSS. And look at that with DLSS turned on, it's like basically the same. So maybe it's the Unreal Engine. Like when you look at no, id tech. So id tech and the Unreal Engine. I don't know. All right, we'll take a look at Baldur's Gate 3 now and see what this has to tell us. Baldur's Gate 3, 1440p. We're not going to use any DLSS for the first test, but I love SMAA. It's the old school goodie. What did I just say? I don't know. And very similar performance here at 1440p with no DLSS. Turning DLSS on, and now Windows 11 is ahead. What's going on? All right, so 1440, Windows 11 ahead. It's sure. Let's try 1080p with no DLSS. Windows 11 is still ahead. And our last test for Baldur's Gate 3, 1080p with DLSS, and Windows 11's ahead again. Huh? All right, so I don't, I don't know how to feel because Windows 10, I, I think we can crown it the winner right now. So there must be something going on with Windows 11 that makes it a little bit wonky. But Baldur's Gate 3 and a couple of other games were slightly ahead when it comes to Windows 11. But I'm having a hard time seeing why I should run Windows 11. It's been running very well otherwise. You know, I, I have not had any blue screens in the last three days. With Windows 10, I was getting a blue screen like once maybe every 45 days or so, from usually from an update that I would roll back or something. So my LTSC uh, rigs have been really solid. My uh, main rig is still running Windows 10 Pro, so I'm gonna have to figure it out soon, but right now I'm, I'm not leaning toward anything. There are a lot of frustrations with Windows 11, but I can fix them. I can fix the rounded edges. I hate that stuff, but I can fix it. See, I show. These are all the benchmarks, but yeah, see? Squared off edges right there. I hate rounded edges. You know, the big bubbly nonsense. See, look at that thing. I hate this thing. I hate it. But, you know, I've got Retrobar. So when I run Retrobar, and also if you're someone who wants to snap it over to the side, look at that, you can do it. Put it on top, wherever you want it. All that stuff. So I'm locking that again. And I've also created a bunch of themes myself for these. My favorite is probably the Midnight Longhorn that I made. I made dark modes and midnight modes. Midnight modes are a little more bluish. Star buttons on my main screen. This is my side screen, but yeah. And then, you know, I'm just using the open shell right here for my start menu. And I had to do a custom thing. And since I'm using a custom taskbar, I had to come in here to my open shell menu and set a line to start menu work area. I did an offset of negative two just so it's just above that, but that aligns it to the start of the working area. Otherwise, the alignment will be weird and it's going to pop up in strange places. So see if that's not checked. It might come up up here in the top. Sometimes it comes up way too low. It just kind of has a mind of its own. So we align it to the work area and that'll come up right there. And you can change the style. I'm using the XP style just for grins right now. Also, the um, system tray can be a little bit wonky just because the volume icon and everything were merged together into that abomination icon with the volume network and stuff all together. That doesn't even work with Retrobar, but I don't care. I, it's, I just install a, a different program to do my audio icon and I just use networking a different way. But, you know, Windows 10 does feel better to me, but Windows 11 looks pretty good. Runs pretty good. It's not quite as good as a turn, but I do worry in the future that some things will not work with it perfectly. There's already been a few things that haven't worked with LTSC just because they're hard coded to do an operating system check, but you can get around that by going into the registry and changing your operating system to say that it's, you know, the pro version and not the enterprise version. And then after you're finished, you're going to change it back or you'll break other things. But yeah, you can install whatever you want just about. It's kind of dumb having to do that because some programs force a 
check to see like what version of Windows is this and it doesn't recognize LTSC like at some of the Adobe programs don't recognize LTSC. So let me know if you were surprised by these results. Let me know which direction you're leaning. Let me know if there's something that you know that I don't know. Is there a reason why I should stick to Windows 11 LTSC over Windows 10 LTSC? Let me know because right now I'm slightly like 53% leaning towards installing Windows 10 LTSC on my rig when, you know, October rolls around, but that might change. Well, I got you over here. Let's take a look at this. These mice are still on sale, 20% off. No, 50% off, half price. My God, uh, got excited there. Use the coupon code Happy Mouse, and that'll show up at checkout. It'll take half of this off. So you're getting the extra 20 bucks flawless sensors. You gotta be kidding me. I keep saying I'm gonna put this on sale, but I've only got two left. Anyway, got some new t-shirts as well, including the one that I'm wearing right now. Where is that thing? There it is. Grab you one of, nope, that's Ivan. <laughs> there it is. Grab you one of these shirts. Be a, an Apple supporter like me. Bye.